Hi, good morning to everybody, and a big hi to Washington, D.C. I'm so happy to be at Smithsonian. Um, let me tell you, I come from a city in India called Mumbai, where we are 20 million of us. A small city, uh, overcrowded at times, but there's a very peculiar problem in the ocean out there, you know. I have lived all my childhood there. I grew up in that city, and suddenly, uh, I realized three, four years back, uh, there was so much of plastic in my ocean there. I shifted to an apartment block, which is right on the sea. And I saw plastic and plastic and plastic, all your red, blues, whites on the sandy beach. It shook me, because as a child, I used to swim in that very sea. So the whole question which was uh, bogging my mind was, how did it happen? And if it has happened in this particular way, how do you deal with it? See, I'm a lawyer by profession. So I said, some people told me, uh, please file a petition to the High Court. Invite the Chief Justice to pass an order. Probably the court orders are going to be the cure for this problem of plastic. Maybe the local municipality will be summoned to the Chief Justice Court and made to answer why it has happened in the first place. The second option, which we all uh, use it, we keep on complaining. <laughs> we do that all the time. I see it on social media. I'm very new to social media, but we see that. Either we blame our uh, president for every wrong in the place, or I blame my prime minister, saying, Mr. Modi, you don't do enough. My ocean is in tatters. But the, the larger issue is, what are we doing about it? You see, you can look for systemic change, policy change, law change, legislative change. But I'm a strong believer, and I speak from my experience as a lawyer, the change has to come from within. It is the larger question is, what are you doing as a citizen of this planet Earth to rectify things? Are we in a position to turn the clock back what it was 50 years back, 70 years back, 100 years back? And I, 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 you know, my forefathers, I come from a country where my forefathers who fought the independence for my country taught me that the problem is with you and the solution is with you. Mahatma Gandhi, who fought for my independence, did not wait for an army to come from abroad to fight his battle. He took the charge himself. He said, here it is the problem. Like I remember, you know, one of the acts uh, was uh, regarding salt. The government, the British government that time had imposed a tax on salt. Ta uh, salt is so basic. Mahatma Gandhi didn't file a petition to the court. He went to the salt creek, picked up the salt, and, say, and told the British, come on, arrest me if you want to. I want to have my salt. This is my country. And that's exactly what was going on in my mind. I told myself, as a lawyer, should I go to the high court and invite the chief justice? Or should I complain on the social media and invite the attention of the world? There's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem. Or, sh or should I do what I thought I was very competent to handle, is wear your gloves and go on the beach. It's my planet, it's my neighborhood, it's my beach, it's my ocean. What am I waiting for? Am I waiting for the government to pass laws? Am I waiting for policies to be framed up? Am I waiting for a ban on single-use plastic? Or I do something positive? I chose the hard way. See, I have been cleaning the beach for now for 81 weeks. It's a very hard, tough journey. It's a laborious job, but that's the right path, according to me. That's the, that's the path I chose to go on. It was a hard, tough decision to make. I pondered it over for a month or two, saying that if I start it, I shouldn't stop it. You see, people do all these activities. You, you, you are well aware on Facebook and Twitter and whatever. They do it as more as like an event, you know? So you do one off event of cleaning, and then you vanish off. Maybe you come back after six months back again, and then you talk about the problem. I said, no. If I'm making a conscious choice of going with the gloves on the beach, I should do it consistently, persistently, and sincerely. And I told myself this question, that if I do it, it has to be till death do us apart or till the ocean is free of plastic. It can't be, I'm, because you see, it's the easier path is to tell the government, come on, do it, come on, do it. <laughs> tell, your, tell your legislator, tell your congressman, you know, member of parliament, frame laws, frame laws, enforce it. And I realized being a lawyer, you see, my country has so many laws, so many laws, you'll get caught. And lawyers are good at it, you know. They take you around at the courts at times. And uh, I realize that there are too many laws, too many rules, too many regulations, no ground action at all. You know, my city has 20 million people. 
and there's absolutely zero ground action. We have what we call slums in Mumbai, you know, where the poorest of poor are living on the creeks and on the coastal belt. Everybody's littering. Your single-use plastic, which comes from the mall, from the shop, just goes into the ocean. There is no STP, the sewage treatment plant, so everything is going into the ocean. So I said to myself, I should take it on myself and do it. And I knew the journey is going to be tough because not a single person can solve it. I'm no King Canute that I can tell, uh, tell the ocean not to come in. Every high tide, it brings the gifts onto the beach, you know. <laughs> and uh, the video which I'm going to play, you'll have a fair uh, look at it. I'll show you the video, and then I continue my chat, because you must understand what kind of work I'm doing. And then I'll take you on why I call it a date with the ocean. I made a short movie, which I'm, I've labeled it as a date with the ocean. But let me add three caveats to it uh, before you see the movie, because I don't know whether your country has seen it or not. Uh, it's a very shocking and disturbing sight, OK? But then uh, it's the rea ground reality. G oceans all over the world are suffering this syndrome. You know? They are devastated by human beings. Second, it is not a bundle of statistics. It's pure flow of emotion. You know? I feel very intensely about ocean. I love it. You know when you're in love, what do you do? There's a surge of emotion all the time. So for me, it's a surge of emotion all the time. So the movie is going to depict that. And the third is, the idea to show you a movie in, in a right uh, when I'm talking about it is for you to think, act, and get provoked eventually. Can we have the movie, please? Just have a look at the movie, and then I come back for a talk back again. This is Mumbai. This is where I was born. This is where I lived all my life. I don't know if I could ever have imagined any life other than this. It's a fascinating world to live in Mumbai, a metro where people from different religious backgrounds. I love Mumbai, and I want to see the coasts of Mumbai and the oceans of Mumbai and of India and of the world relegated back to where it belonged, free of plastic. And I want to see my ocean healthy. I want to see my marine species and birds healthy. I have lived all my life on the coast of Mumbai and particularly very adjacent to Warsaw Beach. And I remember when I was a kid, I used to come with my friends to play in this very beach. This is the consequential effect of convenience in economic prosperity. When I look back, I see only plastic. Plastic and plastic and plastic in my ocean. And what you see now is a tragic devastation. It's symbolic of the era which we live in. We have devastated our oceans. We have devastated the lives of the species which live in the ocean. And we have no right to do that. My right must come to an end where the rights of the other species begin. I must stop there. But I have not stopped. I have continued, I have continued. I have invaded their houses. I have invaded their food habits. And I still remember my first day when I went to Jetty just to do a recce there. I actually sat there and cried that morning. I said to myself, I don't know how long is going to be the journey. I don't know whether I'll be able to do it. Because I was alone at that point of time. But I knew for a fact that I had to make a start. I need to bond with my environment. And that's the time I realized that I had snapped my ties with the ocean, you know. I could not even put my hand in that water. Then I decided I'm going to make an effort to build my personal bond with the ocean. And consequently, if I'm able to provoke people around me who can come and do the same exercise which I wanted to do, that'll be wonderful. And that's how the journey started. I remember my first day, I picked up five packs full of plastic. In my country, we have 1.5 billion people. Imagine if two hands come on the beach, or come on the ocean front, or come on the river body, wherever they are, the water, lakes. My country can become clean faster. In fact, the world can become clean. To my mind, it's always a date with the ocean. So when you're on a date, you, you are physically, mentally at your best. You look forward not only for that evening or that morning or that afternoon, for many more to come until death do us apart. It's almost one and a half year we have been cleaning. United Nations has labeled it as the biggest beach cleanup in the world. We have picked up around five million kgs of plastic and filth from our ocean. I'm not going to complain to my government. I'm not going to complain to my judiciary. I'm not going to complain to anybody. My cry is inside my heart, and I don't have any complaints with anybody. It's me, it's me, it's me.
we are in the 76th week of our journey of cleaning the beaches in ocean a lot of people ask me how long you going to clean this question is flawed because not many people clean the ocean this plastic will go into the deep sea never to come back me and my volunteers will keep on doing it maybe this beach will become clean soon but there are many other beaches which are in equally bad shape as varsava beach was we will continue our efforts on our beaches it's about all of us it's inclusive and it will continue that way till our oceans are made plastic free this is what the scene in mumbai is and let me tell you it's a global phenomena the marine litter problem i mean just google it you'll know i am not giving any statistics it's all there on the internet just google marine litter problem i'm here to convey a message for myself and for everybody who's hearing me and everybody who's in this hall and who will eventually watch this we owe it our, as a fundamental duty to our ocean you know we have waited far too long for our governments to act we have waited far too long for our politicians to act and even in spite of laws and acts being in place we have not done enough there's a major problem with enforcement you know on the ground level there's no enforcement mechanism especially in uh, developing countries you know where people are struggling for their food and basic necessities and we'll have to go there and help and provoke people up doing that you see as a lawyer i understand we hold our planet as a it's it's what i call it an intergenerational equity you know we hold our planet for future generation it's an environmental justice which we must do and it begins from being responsible how do you stop marine litter first of all make your house zero garbage and if 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 others are throwing it you try to clean your ocean or beach that's the best preventive action you can do you see we live our life of right of it's our life is all about convenience single use plastic bags which i find majorly on my beaches it's all convenience you have a right to convenient life and you have a right of the ocean and right of the marine species and birds we'll have to draw some kind of balance the balance at this point of time is tilted heavily in favor of our of our human race you know we we all the time want convenient we'll have to tilt this balance up or how do you tilt this balance up one is go and clean we all are responsible for this marine litter all over the world the oceans uh, the beaches are grappling with it and the second aspect is we are born creative which i you know which i strongly believe as a lawyer as a, now clean, working as an environmentalist to clean the beach we are creative and we are fearless we are born with that but the system around us tells us become little mundane a uh, little simpler you know i feel that if we if if we flash our creativity in a proper way and channel it properly the results could be this you know i have more than 2000 volunteers working in mumbai from different background uh, different religions some are catholic some are muslim some are hindu lawyers doctors housewife school kids you know the idea is i always tell people up give 2 hours in a week not much to you know look forward to we have 168 hours if you give 2 hours you bond with the environment you bond with the ocean and my message generally is that get in, get into mode with as a, as you go on a date you know when you go when you're looking forward to something you go on a date with ocean things fall in place i have provoked a lot of small kids who are uh, below age who are on date with ocean <laughs> and now my idea is to provoke more adults who can go on date with an ocean you know i keep on talking in mumbai about it we do ground action and i think it's high time we human beings react to it positively and take it in a hand and people ask me how long you will do it what is the issue how it will get solved i mean clean your 10 by 10 i expect you know i'm not sure to become a saint a lot of people tell me oh god you're doing a great job i don't want it i'm selfish i'm purely selfish and the selfish needs come from the fact that i want to do something for my planet and i tell people up you know if it becomes your selfish need maybe our planet will be much more better and you know our oceans are going to be fitter and healthier uh thank you very much for inviting me over i think i'm running out of the time the guys are indicating to me i would have loved to talk longer you know being a lawyer we talk a lot so uh, but i guess uh, my time is up thank you for bearing with me and i hope uh my video and my little chat has provoked you on going on a date with the ocean and uh, since i'm in washington dc i was speaking to some local guys here and i said uh, if given a, if given a choice whether to speak here at smithsonian or 
clean the river Potomac, I'm told it's a little dirty, I would be there and I would be inviting all of you all to there. <laughs> but I'll do that on this Saturday. I intend to take three hours. So anybody who's from Washington, D.C. wants to join in the cleanup, let's do a little cleanup of Potomac River here in Washington. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you.